afternoon. I hope you have your coffee ready here because this is going to be an exciting presentation. Uh, we're excited about giving it to you, and uh, I think you'll find it extremely useful and uh, and help you to um, think through this type of technology, which is very very uh, impactful and and uh, technology that is being leveraged today in the market uh, as we speak. So uh, I'm going to start the presentation. I know it's just about two o'clock here on the East Coast time, um, but we're going to go ahead and start the presentation and and give everybody a sense of um, the exciting stuff that we will be able to tell you about today. Okay, so uh, I let me introduce myself. My name is Eric Finver. I'm Vice President of Sales and Marketing for VisionNet Systems. Uh, we're an IT consulting services company. We focus a lot in the retail and consumer products and services space. I'm also joined by my uh, colleague, Daniel Draymond, who is Chief Executive Officer of Moingo. And um, Moingo is a mobile marketing platform features uh, and benefits of the solution. Uh, and we'll cover a lot of other territory as well uh, relative to Beacon Solutioning, but I, uh, I do want to make these introductions and then tell you a little bit about the areas we're going to cover. The first is give you a little bit of context around Beacon technology. Uh, there's been a lot of talk around it. Uh, it's, uh, there's a lot of hype around it, and there's a lot of skepticism. Uh, so we want to give you some of those stats and some of those numbers. We also uh, want to give you a baseline about Beacon, so give you some high-level information, things that you might not know already about the way Beacon technology works. right? And, um, and then once we get through some of those points, I'll turn it over to Daniel. He'll talk through... Uh, the Moingo platform, its features, its benefits. He'll, he'll uh, put that, uh, those capabilities into context for you relative to um, either retail situations or any other situations where you may have opportunity to, um, to connect up with your consumers. Um, and then, of course, we'll, we'll talk about how you might get started leveraging this type of technology move it down the, uh, the road, so to speak, and then and really take it up to the next level and make it super effective for you. Uh, we're going to try and leave some time for questions and answers at the end of the presentation, but we do have a lot of material. If we don't get to all the questions before the hour is up, um, please go ahead and do submit your questions anyway to us uh, by clicking the question mark icon that you have on your screen, and we'll be sure to make sure that we answer those questions and get them out to all the attendees as well. Um, one point I do want to make mention of, just so everybody knows, for the context of the presentation, there's, there's a lot of information uh, that seems to be geared more towards retail type organizations. Uh, uh, those companies that are selling consumer products through retail uh, formats. That's not the only use for Beacon technology. I sub-verticals within the CPG space. So please don't bail out on us because you, uh, you may hear something that might be very effective for you in your own um, supporting your own marketing initiatives in your own business models. So I'm going to jump right, right off to the, to the really what is, this, this is really kind of the jumping off point around mobile because as you probably know and the reason you've joined this uh, this webinar is that uh, mobility in the hands of the of individuals in the hands of the consumer has effectively changed the world it it truly has changed the world uh, consumers are now connected uh, digitally in real time and can interact effectively uh, not only with um, their personal networks but their business networks uh, their um, supplier networks, uh, essentially the universe of, of the Internet is connected to the consumer 
and in the palm of the consumer's hand, right? And we need to take advantage of that. As marketers of our products, we must take advantage of that, uh, that disruption in, in technology. And I think the Beacon, uh, uh, I think once we get through the presentation, you'll, you'll also agree that Beacon solutioning, Beacon technology allows us to accomplish that goal, right? So now we can engage with a customer or a consumer through this mobile channel um, and engage them with beacons if we deploy beacons into our uh, either a real real estate space, retail space, um, other other types of locations potentially that can be leveraged to really communicate with the consumer in real time. And if we and if we adopt an, an intelligent approach around marketing, if we think through the best ways to approach those consumers. Uh, and loyal customers, <clears throat> we can do so by providing information that's relevant to them at the right time, at the right location, through the right channel, namely your, their mobile, um, uh, through a format that has become quite ubiquitous in today's communication model. And what it does is, just to kind of finish this slide up, is it, it turns the technology that's available and puts the, the customer at the center of, of that communication. We call it consumer centricity. So a couple more points I just wanted to make uh, that would drive the, all of this home for us, that we can really kind of put this notion to bed of whether, you know, number one, uh, we should even, you know, think about building a, a, uh, a mobile app for our brand or even done over the last couple of years. They published it this year, and the numbers are compelling. From 2012 to 2014, the mobile influence on in-store sales jumped from $160 billion um, uh, additional stats, 41% of all consumers are leveraging a branded app. 67% 67 of um, the millennial group are using branded apps, right? So if there was any mo anything in anybody's mind out there in the audience suggesting, well, maybe we shouldn't, maybe we shouldn't bo <coughs> bother with, <coughs> excuse me, developing a, a mobile app, a branded app for our, for our website, um, uh, I think this, these numbers really kind of put that to bed. In fact, two out of three top retail brands, top 25, 30 retail brands, have a dual approach and strategy around leveraging the mobile. So clearly, uh, mobility uh, in the hands of, of our customers has created a powerful story. There's some additional stats here as well. Uh, that I've turned to here it was published in eMarketer, um, which is a digital marketing and insights uh, surveyor. But these are also very compelling. 60% of all consumers that opened an app in store do so to look for a coupon. 70% of those are willing to receive personalized coupons or special offers while they're actually shopping in the store. 50%, uh, essentially half, of those surveyed would consider an alternative brand if a coupon was available for that alternative. And then the, uh, the stats on the bottom here, 55% of all surveyed consumers um, will spend at least $25 uh, or more if they receive coupons, uh, while they re when they receive coupons. Uh, and of course, 50% of uh, those targeted are uh, enjoy, enjoy a higher conversion rate uh, to uh, going from a browser to a buyer um, of those companies that are using mobile coupons. So clearly, mobile couponing works, right? May not be for every organization uh, that's on the line and, and in, in the audience, but certainly mobile couponing will work. But as you'll see in the presentation as we move forward, mobile couponing is not the only way to engage your customers. 
All right, we'll talk about that a little bit later in the presentation. So that brings me to, uh, now that we've kind of put the stats out of the way and essentially convinced all the audience that this is something they need to take seriously, uh, we want to talk a little bit about beacons just so we can educate ourselves on the basics, right? Uh, iBeacon is a term that was uh, branded by Apple, uh, but it really is a ubiquitous term, meaning anything that's driven through a beacon uh, transmitter. Okay, beacon transmitters are low-energy transmitters that use Bluetooth, and we'll talk a little bit about Bluetooth on the privacy slide. <clears throat> but that's the, essentially the transmission that's being leveraged to recognize whether a customer is within proximity of a beacon. I mentioned the term iBeacon, it's an Apple trademark, but essentially whether you call it iBeacon or beacons, it doesn't really much matter. Uh, as I mentioned, beacons are, are ubiquitous. They will work for iPhones or with iPhones. It will also work with Android devices of any kind. Right? As long as you turn on your beacon uh, or your Bluetooth rather for your phone, if there's a beacon in proximity, it will connect with you. It only transmits, it does not receive any information. We'll talk a little bit more when we get into privacy about that uh, uh, bullet. Uh, also, you should be aware that typical ranges, and they vary, but typical ranges for a, uh, a beacon is around 80 to 100 plus feet, 25 to 40 meters. Okay, and as we said, uh, Beacons only transmit, in, they only transmit to register uh, something to mark it of where it is location-wise based on proximity. It does not collect any information that the user uh, has on their phone. Okay? So those are a little bit, uh, a little bit of high-level information about beacons just to arm yourself there. Now, one thing I'd like to talk about is how do you make these things work in your environment? So whether you're a store, whether you're a hotelier, whether you're a restaurateur, whether you're some other type of service or organization that speaks to a consumer or consumer base, um, how you uh, design the layout uh, and deploy your beacons is going to make a difference, right? Because uh, beacons will notify the platform when uh, a particular individual that has the app downloaded on their on their mobile handset when it comes into proximity. So it'll, it'll know when it's outside proximity. It'll know when it comes into proximity. It'll also know how close the handset comes to the beacon. So we can map this out, and we can understand traffic patterns of our consumer base. Right? So within a given location, based on the setup of our beacons and the uh, transmission uh, uh, territory of the transmission itself, we can essentially understand the movement of the, uh, of the consumer within our space. Okay? Then the other thing I would like to mention on this, on how to use beacons, is that different levels of interaction can be triggered depending on the range of where the consumer is vis-a-vis -vis the, vis -vis the beacon. So, for example, if you laid out a certain set of beacons, three, four, five, within a store location, <clears throat> and you wanted to make sure that you uh, set up your new product launch within a certain parameter or certain distance of that beacon, uh, we can track very clearly as to where the consumer is and uh, offer up different types of triggered discussions um, to those consumers when they are in certain range of the beacon that you are tracking, right? So really it depends on how you want to leverage the, the layout and how you want to uh, go to market with your marketing techniques to engage your customers at whatever range and, and with whatever message you decide to set up. Okay. Next point I would like to make is, well, what's the difference between beacons and GPS? I have GPS on my phone, right? I use Google Maps to get me to where I got to get to. But when you're talking about really understanding where a customer is 
at any given time within, a, say, a location, um, you want to be able to be more pinpoint in terms of where they are, right? So, um, so accuracy is going to matter, uh, and we're going to talk a, a little bit about accuracy here. And, and there are other things that are, that are an advantage when we discuss beacons over GPS. My first bullet's about privacy, and we'll talk a little bit about privacy on the next slide. I mentioned a little bit about accuracy and pinpointing um, the particular consumer or handset um, when they get into proximity uh, of, a, of a beacon uh, mapped, process, mapped uh, location. So for example, if you're indoor in a covered mall, your GPS is not necessarily providing you uh, the exact uh, coordinates of where somebody may be vis-a-vis -vis your specific lo uh, location. But once they come into the field of the beacon layout, that accuracy is, is, uh, is um, increased many fold, right? So to the point where, as I mentioned, we can track pattern of a particular uh, consumer. Also within a location, within a store, we can track, as I mentioned, on, on mapping out the beacons and mapping out, out traffic patterns, uh, we can also uh, collect information and build analytics around that as well, okay? And then another area that, uh, that beacons provides uh, advantages over GPS is just simply the power consumption. Beacons, although um, you can hardwire them into your locations, can also run off simple batteries. So uh, it, it is very inexpensive to leverage uh, from a power consumption standpoint. Okay, moving right along. On the privacy side of the equation, which is something that is um, that many in the audience may see as hurdles, they may, they may <clears throat> have these conversations internally in their organizations. What are we going to do about the, this, this notion of big brothers watching me, right? And certainly we don't want to give our customers the perception that big brother is watching them, right? And there's a couple of things that, that we should keep in mind as, uh, as promoters of this type of technology. We should keep in mind the fact that Beacons are only transmitting to understand where a mobile handset might be vis-a-vis -vis proximity. That's all they do. They don't collect information. They don't store any information. It is it's simply a ping. Um, and actually, the information is, that, that's collected is much more around the, uh, the app itself that gets downloaded onto the mobile handset, right? But even on the mobile handset, this type of technology offers the consumer a triple opt-in, or maybe better put, a triple opt-out scenario, right? The user, number one, has to put on and enable the Bluetooth function within their phone. If they don't enable the Bluetooth function, it won't register. It'll essentially be blind to the beacon. So that's number one. Second thing is the user has to choose to install, excuse me, a, uh, a location-aware application. They need to download and install it on their phone uh, for them to be able to access uh, our brand information, right, um, and have it and have a two-way dialogue going on. And then thirdly, users need to explicitly agree to allow the app to ha to gain proximity information from their Bluetooth um, connection, okay? So it really does provide a lot of privacy uh, offering to a consumer who is very, uh, let's say, uh, a little bit more wary or antsy about um, providing too much information to, um, to enterprise out there or, or uh, retailers or other types of organizations that may want to interact with them, right? But in our mind, really, the customer, it's, it's almost as if the customer is really kind of chasing the brand, brand rather than the other way around. Most folks who want to interact with you, with your brand, are going to find a way to do it. And, this, and these are the ways to uh, put the issue of privacy to bed. Okay. 
I want to just talk about one slide here before moving it on and giving uh, the reins over to Daniel uh, to take you through the Moingo platform and uh, run through features and benefits and give you some ideas of things to think about. Uh, and this is really about how to think through um, an app that is either uh, away from a location or a beacon, near a location or a beacon, or actually in a store that has beacons, right? And as marketers, we want to take advantage of as much information we can glean as possible, right? We want to use all that analytic information to understand our customers and to deliver the right message at the right time through the right channel, right? And the best way to do that is to make sure that if you deploy beacon solutioning, uh, that you um, think through what is the business requirements, what are the requirements you're going to leverage to make sure you leverage the um, or deploy a solution that makes best use of this model <clears throat> such that you can interact in intelligent ways with your, with your consumer, right? So the best of the apps that are out there in the marketplace will understand that when the consumer is away uh, from, the, from the, uh, the proximity, there's a certain type of communication. When they come in range of the proximity, there's another type of communication. When they're in the store and in location, there's another way of communicating. And using all these modalities, which Daniel is going to talk about in his part of the presentation, it's very, very important to making sure that you don't anger the customer, you don't become a nuisance to the customer, you become a value add to the customer and, um, and develop stronger brand loyalty and, and greater wallet share with your customers. Okay, and then the last thing I just want to mention here you might be able to see that at the bottom of the, the uh, iPhone screen on the right-hand side. Some uh, organizations actually make it explicit whereby, hey, we know you come into our store. Would you like to switch to the in-store app? Or you're leaving the, our store location. Would you like to go back to your, mo your uh, mobile commerce app or something like that? So, some companies will have choose to do this all behind the scenes and make it automatic. Some companies decide to make it very explicit and make it very interactive with their customer base. So that includes that concludes my part of the presentation. I'm sorry for I took up too much time there, Daniel, but I'm going to turn it over to you, and uh, I'll help you drive the screens as you want to move forward. Perfect. Thank you so much, Eric. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us. Um, I'm actually calling you uh, today from Europe, where I'm on a, on a business trip, and I hope that the internet connection will uh, hold up. Uh, I was disconnected twice while Eric was talking, so uh, fingers crossed. Uh, let's move to the next slide, and uh, I'm really happy to, to uh, be here and to be able to present to you some exciting stuff that we do in the, with Beacons. Um, you know, the goal really here is uh, to increase the loyalty of customers um, and to get from the most loyal customers, those customers that are loyal enough to the brand to download an app, uh, those customers who are generating, you know, the bulk of uh, the sales for a typical um, brand, uh, to get the most out of them. And the, we really create a virtuous uh, circle uh, in which the collection of data um, and its analysis allows us to drive behavior and rinse uh, and repeat. Uh, if we move to the next slide. So at, at the center of uh, what we're doing is really um, a connection in the cloud uh, between uh, a branded app which we could either develop for you or that we could uh, help you improve your existing uh, apps. That, that's what you see on the right hand of the screen. Um, so, if, if a brand doesn't have um, a, um, an app ready or they want to, to replace it, we're happy to, uh, together with VisionNet, to, to provide you with a full-blown app uh, based on, uh, you know, a standard uh, retailer engagement app uh, that we have. Um, but uh, if you already have an app, and maybe it's a branding app, maybe it's an app that provides some benefits already to the customers, 
by embedding our software development kit on your existing app, we're able to connect it to the cloud and draw all the benefits that we will show you in the, the, next, um, the next slides. But another um, interesting um, approach uh, that we have is that we believe in a decentralized uh, marketing um, um, platform, one in which, uh, yes, uh, the headquarters is uh, where most of the communication is happening uh, and where most of the promotions are being uh, designed and so forth, but where if you wanted to empower people in the field, uh, be it regional managers and you know, all the way down to store managers, they too can interact with the platform and communicate with the customers uh, on a very local way with uh, their customers. And we'll talk more about that in the subsequent slides. Uh, next. So the, the platform that we're going to, to uh, show you uh, does um, you know, uh, a lot of things, but at the core of everything that we do, uh, those are interactions that are sensitive uh, both to the location of the customer and to the time. And as Eric mentioned earlier, those are you know, obviously coupons are very important and some retailers uh, you know, draw a lot of benefit from them, but there are many other ways to engage customers beyond discounting and couponing, and we'll talk about uh, some of them. In some cases, we integrate with uh, the point of sale, um, but we also have solutions that allow you to uh, use the platform without an integration uh, with the cash register. Uh, it's multi-channel, so we don't use just the, the push notifications we talk about uh, a lot, but also NFC, uh, QR codes, obviously beacons, which is uh, the main uh, topic of this uh, 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 conversation. Companies that already have their own CRM systems can integrate uh, the mobile platform with their existing uh, CRM system. But most importantly, this is all about drawing people to brick and mortar locations. It's not about selling online, it's about leveraging the mobile channel in order to get more visits and more purchases in physical uh, locations. Next. So the platform is pretty comprehensive, um, and but it's also very modular. So, um, you know, assuming that uh, you're not really interested in uh, the local aspect of the platform, then you don't necessarily need uh, to uh, utilize that, and you could uh, run all your promotion centrally. Um, maybe, uh, you know, you're really keen on geofencing and less on beacons or vice versa. Uh, it's, it's really on a project-by-project -project basis um, some modules are being uh, called upon in, in order to uh, provide support uh, to a certain uh, implementation, to, to the needs of a certain uh, brand, a certain retailer, a certain hotel, uh, you know, restaurant chain, etc. Um, but the breadth of uh, the, the, the platform allows us to pick and choose the best modules uh, for each uh, solution. Next. And you know, going back to our, um, I would say our philosophical uh, point of view of, of what's, what's important uh, for a brand that, that has stores, the real advantage of a brand that has uh, physical stores across the country is that the, the managers of uh, those stores are embedded in uh, the, their communities and they know what makes those communities tick. And with a platform that allows you to decentralize uh, your communication, you can empower those local managers to basically leverage existing uh, or events that happen uh, in time, and some of them are listed here. You know, it may be a parade for, uh, I don't know, Columbus Day. Uh, it could be that there's a, a, a blizzard in the northeast while it's very hot in uh, the southwest. Um, maybe the local team uh, won, won a game. Or in a supermarket environment, imagine that you have perishables that are, you know, like tomatoes that are about to go bad and you want to, uh, let your customers in that area that uh, in your supermarket for the next 24 hours, tomatoes are at 50% off. Typically, uh, with mobile um, platforms that are uh, not decentralized, you cannot take advantage of the mobile channel in order to do this very local, hyper-local marketing. And here we give you an opportunity to do uh, just that. And in the next slide, Eric, if you could move to the next slide, we show you an example of how McDonald's is using our platform uh, to do exactly that. So during the last uh, Super Bowl weekend, 
uh, they sent very different uh, communications uh, to people that were in neutral markets. So in most markets, they sent the push notification that you see on the left, which is, hey, if you have a Super Bowl party, why don't you buy uh, your food at McDonald's? But people in the Seattle area got a message that was way more specific about, um, you know, uh, supporting the Seahawks and gave the impression of the customers at that place that, you know, they and McDonald's have basically the same goals. They want to, to win the same game. They're on the same side. So, again, just an example of uh, localization and uh, decentralization. Uh, next. And one other topic which is very important is that you should not treat mobile as its own thing that runs, you know, in its own fiefdom, in its own uh, silo. Um, and the best implementations are implementations in which the mobile channel is actually integrated with other marketing efforts. Um, if you know, for example, that's you know the screenshots that you see on the right, that a given customer liked a page, liked a product on Facebook. Um, upon that uh, customer entering the store, you can send them a push notification and say, hey, this product that you just saw, uh, that you liked earlier on Facebook, it is available in the store and here's a coupon for you um, to get it. So, not from day one, but ultimately on your roadmap, we would uh, certainly encourage you uh, to uh, integrate your beacon-based proximity marketing with your other uh, online um, and in-store uh, marketing uh, efforts. Next. And, you know, before we dive more into uh, stuff which is hyper-local to the level of uh, beacons and interactions in the store, let's not forget that those devices also have GPS uh, and that with GPS you can get a heat map of where customers are using the app where they are away from the store. And, um, you know, those insights that you get about where you draw your customers from, in what neighborhoods they live, uh, can be leveraged to do some kind uh, of, of marketing which is, again, outside of the mobile channel. Uh, an anecdote which I, I'm really fond of uh, repeating is that um, there's a McDonald's uh, next to an airport in California and the owner of that restaurant, the, the franchisee there, for years believed that he got most of his customers from a business campus which is not uh, to the restaurant. What the heat map showed him is that in actuality, 80% of his customers are in the residential area, which is south of the restaurant. And, you know, th this insight is, is used, you know, is, is um, uh, gained through the use of uh, 21st uh, century, you know, iPhones and Android devices, but his uh, action was very old school. He went and purchased, um, you know, uh, a billboard, or actually the, the, an ad inside the, the stop, um, the bus stop, which is next to the, the business campus, saying, hey, did you know there's a McDonald's uh, down the road? So sometimes you can get an insight for mobile and apply it elsewhere. Let's move to the next slide. Um, so let's just mention it in passing. Uh, payment is also obviously something uh, which uh, can be done very nicely in uh, mobile. Uh, and VisionNet and Moingo have the ability to uh, help you integrate also mobile payment inside um, the, your, your mobile app to a point where it can also be activated with beacons. Think about uh, operations such as click and collect, uh, where the customer may be purchased online and with a beacon, we would discover that they enter the store and we will guide them to the right place where they can collect uh, the, uh, the goods that they have uh, purchased prior to entering the store. Again, just an example. Let's move to the next slide. And as Eric mentioned earlier about uh, couponing uh, being important but not the, the beginning and the end uh, of those engagements, uh, we gathered for you here a number of um, of examples of um, uh, engagements that start, uh, let, let, let's start on the right, so yes, you know, you, you see a coupon there with the offer details, etc. It can be redeemable uh, at the store, but you can do other things. Uh, on the left you see uh, an event. Um, so let's say that you are a retail store and you have a new collection um, and you're totally, you're a luxury brand, you're not at all into couponing, 
you can use uh, the platform to send a push notification to your best customer saying, hey, you're a VIP at our store. Uh, we have a new collection, and we want to invite you to see that collection before you know, the, 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 the public at large, and allowing those customers to RSVP directly from within the application, setting quotas, saying, you know, for the store in San Francisco, we want to have 500 people. The store in New York is larger. We want to have 100, 800 people coming. And we have a very small store in Chicago, so 250 people. Uh, when, when we have 250 RSVPs, we will stop sending uh, those invitations. And when customers react to those notifications and uh, RSVP from within the app, uh, an event is added to the calendar. They will be reminded uh, of the event and so forth. So it's a very powerful way to engage customers uh, without leaving any money on the table, without providing any discount, without cheapening the brand if you're a luxury brand. Um, then just to the right of it, in yellow, you see the loyalty cards where you can get a stamp for every action that you make, and it's up to the brand to decide what an action is. An action could be a purchase, so you get a stamp every time you made a purchase. It could be a visit, so we would pick up the fact that you visited the store with a beacon and automatically award your stamp just thanking you for visiting uh, our stores. Um, and another option is to encourage people to check in on Facebook or on Foursquare or you know, the, the, the social network of your choice and saying, you know, if you want to get this stamp, you really need not only to visit the store, but also to tell your friends that you're here. So check in on Facebook, and we will give you a stamp. And obviously, all this dialogue is done inside the app in an automatic way, but incentives uh, are right there. And then, um, you know, you can also add gamification elements. Uh, so what you see in the middle is an example of uh, an application uh, we did uh, for McDonald's in uh, Asia, in several countries in Asia. And the idea here is that it's a, a, an engagement app, just like any other retailer uh, would engage their customers. But there is one uh, icing on the cake. This app is also an alarm clock. Now, why would somebody use an alarm clock uh, provided to, to them by a, a retailer, or you know, McDonald's in that case, instead of using the alarm clock that comes built in uh, the smartphone? The idea here is that uh, this alarm clock rewards them with a surprise. So every morning when you wake up to that uh, alarm clock, you may get a coupon, you may get uh, an MP3 file, like a song that you see here, Happy from Pharrell, uh, courtesy of the brand. And there's a sweepstakes, and every day some guy is winning the jackpot, you know, a few hundred dollars. Um, and again, that's another way to engage customers with gamification, sweepstakes, etc. Uh, let's move to the next slide. So those um, um, scenarios that we, that we mentioned, that we keep mentioning immediately uh, thereafter, uh, are very powerful, but you need to pay attention. And Eric, if you could go to the next slide. Because those tools, although they are very powerful, if you don't use them, um, if you don't apply enough uh, thought uh, about the, the programs that you want to trigger and the actions, you might uh, run into some problems, and we've highlighted a few horror stories for you in the next uh, couple of slides, things, things to think about. Um, Eric, would you move to the next slide? So a few, uh, you know, as I, mean, as I call them, horror stories. Um, if I'm trailing my wife in a department store, uh, and I'm in the proximity of a beacon in the department store, uh, that doesn't mean that sending me a, a coupon for women's shoes uh, makes a lot of sense. You know, uh, maybe what you should send me is something to cheer me up, uh, and not a coupon for for shoes. Uh, again, if it's tied to your CRM and you know that my gender uh, is male and I'm currently in the women's shoe department, you can avoid making this mistake. And then, again, you need to know as much as possible about your customers, you know, to draw advantage uh, from um, from this technology. Another one is uh, an eagerness, uh, what you call location overkill, uh, where every time somebody passes near a beacon, um, you, that person would get a push notification that you know, can become bothersome very, very uh, fast. And the, the last example is an example, actually a, a mistake that Moingo did. Um, again, with our customer McDonald's, they have in multiple markets agreements in which when the local team wins a game, 
um, they would send them a, a special offer, you know, a special celebration uh, coupon. Um, and one of those teams is the Washington Nationals, uh, and they won an, a, a, a baseball game in San Diego. It was an away game, and they won at 10 p.m. California time. But guess what? 10 p.m. California time, it's one morning in Washington, D.C., and we awakened up a lot of people with push notifications saying, hey, you got a coupon for Chicken McNuggets. People didn't appreciate that. Now, fortunately, it's pretty uh, easy to uh, repair those things and to remedy. Um, you know, back to the shoe department um, example, connect it to the CRM and make sure that only customers who showed interest in a specific product uh, get offers when they're in the proximity of those products. Um, if you already told me that uh, your drugstore is, um, you know, that I'm near one of your drugstores, maybe you should avoid telling it to me uh, again in the next week, in the next month or so, again, depending upon uh, the situation. Uh, and what we implemented in terms of um, games is that whenever a game is won after 9 p.m., we make the coupon available immediately if somebody wants to have uh, an instant gratification uh, and to celebrate the team's win uh, at midnight, that's fine, but the actual push notification is only sent the day after. Let's move to the next slide. So, you know, in summary, uh, the, the connection between the mobile, uh, the beacon, and the CRM is what's important here. Uh, and you should not treat it, the beacon as a standalone uh, technology. The mobile and the beacon as a standalone technology is really when you tie it up with information about your customers that it makes a lot of sense. And what we're going to show you in the next slide are use cases that do exactly that. Now, those use cases are mostly about uh, retail. Uh, but um, they can very much be extrapolated to scenarios uh, that uh, you know uh, apply to restaurant chains, uh, to hotels, and to other service uh, industries. Let's move to the next slide because we are kind of short on time, and I want to, to talk about specific uh, scenarios. So one of the things that you can do uh, with beacons is just gather business intelligence. So we're not talking about engaging here; we're talking about knowing where our customers spend time. So do you want to know how much uh, 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 time a person uh, spends in your uh, store whenever they visit you? And you can know it both statistically, saying, you know, on average people when they visit my store spend 20 minutes in the store, but also individually. You can know that Jane, whenever she visits the store, it's hit and run. She gets into the store, she buys something, she's out within five minutes. Uh, and on the other hand, um, Rebecca, when she comes, you know, she spends an hour in the store and she goes to every single uh, display inside uh, the store. You can address those people in a very different way once you know more about the visit patterns. Let's move to the next slide. So once we, we go beyond just the, the gathering of business intelligence, there are other things that um, which are actually action, actionable. So one of them is noti notifying associates. So imagine, let's say, a jewelry store, and you know that the high roller just went into the store. Uh, you, you know, we identified uh, this person's entry with the beacon. Uh, we can send a text message to the staff saying, look, a very loyal customer who used to spend a lot of money just walked to the door, go and greet Mr. Smith, and give him the best attention. Or in, in, uh, in a hotel, um, environment, uh, you could have the, the people at reception greeting uh, uh, repeat customers by their name helped with uh, this type of technology. Then there's the whole concept of engaging the customers in the store, welcoming them, moving them on the path to purchase uh, along the store with push notifications, invitations to events, etc. And then the, the really coolest thing in my mind in terms of Beacon is the entire concept of retargeting from the physical world to uh, online and from online to the physical world. And we're going to talk more about that in the subsequent uh, slide. So let's move to the next slide. So the first example is an example of retargeting using Beacons uh, from somebody who visited the store and we want to address that person after she made uh, the visit. So here we, we call her Tina, and you know, with a beacon, we know that she spent 15 minutes in the store, and because we also put a beacon in the fitting room, we even know that she tried an item. But because um, 
the mobile app is also tied to a loyalty uh, number, we also know that she left the store without making a purchase. So now we know that she's in the market, she's interested in buying um, you know, uh, some clothes. We need to keep her interested in our brand. And the way to do that is to send her a message you know, by email, push notification, uh, thanking her for a visit, inviting her to an event. Um, and also we can uh, pop up banner ads on favorite uh, sites that she visits, reminding the, her about uh, our brand. So that was one direction, that was the person who visited the store and that we are going to keep communicating to after the visit. The other direction, if we could go to the other slide, is a person that actually went on our online uh, website uh, and maybe tried to buy uh, an item. Uh, she looked for a certain uh, pair of jeans in that example, but then she left without checking out. She actually abandoned the shopping cart. And when she does that, we have a very clear indication that she's in the market to buy, uh, in this case, you know, we, we actually know exactly what the product that she's interested in. Uh, and then when she passes by the store and a beacon picks her up, we could also do it with GPS, and when you know she's in the vicinity of store, she'd say, you know, maybe a couple of blocks away, we can send her a push notification. And we can say, hey, you know, come into our store, you can try that item on. Now again, we don't want to creep uh, customers out, and maybe this message is too explicit. You know, you, you don't want to send a message saying, "We know that yesterday at 11 uh, at night, you were on our website and you were looking at uh, jeans size 28." Um, what you want to say is really, um, you know, come to the store with new items, etc. But in your mind, she'll make the connection. If we could move to the next slide. And one of the things that uh, our platform enables are recipes that are more sophisticated than just a simple beacon. Uh, the example that we show here is a customer that enters a department store, and so that customer is being picked up by a beacon at the entry of the store, so we know exactly when they enter the store. But we have another beacon in every department within the store, and we know that after so and so minutes, in this case uh, it's set to 10 minutes, uh, that person still hasn't ventured into the men's clothing department. Again, it's a pull down, you could have selected any uh, department uh, of your choice. Then, and only then, send them a coupon for uh, a discount. If that person would go directly to the men's clothing department, there's no reason to leave money on the table by discounting. Um, but if we want to encourage uh, people on the path uh, to purchase, if we want to guide them within the store, this type of recipes uh, that uh, you an interaction not with a single beacon but with geofencing and multiple beacons um, is really helpful and can increase your return on investment. Uh, furthermore, the system is built in such a way that you can create this uh, recipe once and get it applied to all your stores. So let's say that you have 500 stores across uh, the country and the, the stores have a very different layout and maybe the men's department is on the second floor in San Francisco, on the fifth floor in um, Dallas and uh, in basement in New York, it doesn't matter. We, we look at all those beacons not in a physical way about you know which floor they are and how deep inside the store, but we label them based on the departments where they are deployed, and therefore you can create this recipe and get it applied universally throughout uh, across all your stores. Let's move to the next slide. So. What, what we have shown you here is pretty comprehensive and you know maybe overwhelming, and some companies make the mistake of trying to do too much um, at once. So our recommendation to all brands is to start with the simplest implementation uh, of mobile loyalty uh, without deep integrations into neither CRM nor um, the point of sale, and maybe even. Uh, start with geofencing and without beacons, etc., and just get your feet wet and create immediately a positive ROI. Because in order to get the buy-in from everybody in the organization, it's important with a minimum uh, effort to immediately show results. And this technology works so well that this is more or less guaranteed. The next step is once everybody saw, wow, this mobile stuff is actually working, uh, let's do more, is to start implementing those beacons integrating with the point of sale, instead of addressing everybody the same way, 
uh, started to segment. So you see who are the people who use the app more frequently, who visit your stores more frequently, etc. You're going to talk to them differently than you talk to other people. Uh, again, based on this data that you gather, you first need to, to gather data before you can start uh, the segmentation process. And then ultimately, you have to integrate everything that you do in the mobile channel with your other CRM, uh, other marketing efforts through the CRM system and do this kind of holy grail uh, of omni-channel uh, marketing, which is redirecting people that were online to visit your physical stores and to redirect people that were in your physical stores to also uh, interact with you in an online manner. And I believe that pretty much concludes um, our slides, Eric. Yep, that concludes our content slides. And so I'm going to open it up to the audience to uh, go ahead and, and click on that question mark. Uh, let us know if you have any questions and we'll answer them straight away. And I'll give you a couple minutes. Okay, uh, there is, uh, ooh, there's a couple coming in now. So, uh, so Daniel, uh, one of the first questions here is, what is the most effective way to, er, to encourage customers to download our app? That's a very good question, um, because obviously all this works only uh, when you have customers uh, you know, using your app and enjoying it. Um, and what we have seen that works really well is, first and foremost, to make sure that there is an incentive. So your call to action should not say, hey, uh, brand so-and-so now as an app, you should download it because people want to see the, the benefit. Uh, you should offer them an advantage. It could be a free item. It could be a discount on the next purchase. But the call to action should include uh, a, a very clear advantage, a very clear benefit uh, to download the app. Now, the other question is how do you let people know about that advantage and about the fact that, that you have new, this new brand app that can uh, make their life easier and that can uh, help them uh, get discounts. Um, and there are multiple approaches, uh, including you know online advertising, mobile advertising, in-store displays, you know posters inside the store, uh, etc. But what we have found to be the most effective uh, way to convince people to download the app is a dialogue between at checkout. So basically, when a customer uh, at checkout is paying uh, for the item that you just bought, the salesperson uh, associate would ask them, hey, did you download our app? And if the answer is negative, then uh, the sales associate would say, you know, if you download the app, you are going to get 10% on your next uh, purchase, or you're going to get uh, free socks when you buy a t-shirt, or whatever you crafted as a uh, your um, your incentive uh, for download, uh, and would hand them a little card with instructions on how to download uh, the app. Uh, that little card might have uh, instructions, maybe a QR code that would bring them directly to the to the app store. Uh, but most importantly, we give you feedback and we show you in every one of the stores how many people they have onboarded on a weekly basis. And if you see that I don't know the store on Main Street in uh, Kalamazoo is onboarding 50 new customers every week, but uh, the, the store on uh, First Street in uh, San Francisco is only onboarding 20 customers uh, a week, then probably you need to train again uh, the sales personnel in San Francisco. They're probably not doing this dialogue that you instruct them to do uh, and not encouraging people to or customers uh, to download the app. Oh, thank you uh, for that, uh, Daniel. There's a couple others here. Let's continue because we do have about six, seven minutes left. Um, how do you get customers to turn on Bluetooth and location services? Without them, the beacons won't be effective. That's, again, a, 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 a very good question to which, fortunately, we have uh, pretty good answers and we, we have experience in how to do that. So. Uh, you know, typically, uh, a couple of years ago, it was considered best practice simply to have those, you know, uh, iOS uh, pop-ups saying, app so-and-so wants to know your location. Do you agree? Yes or no? 
or up so and so want to send you push notification, do you accept them, yes or no? And people would, would not understand why they should say yes. Um, so today the best practice is really to give a tutorial as the first uh, or one of the first pages in the app saying we are going to ask your permission uh, to um, you know, get your location and we are going to ask your permission to send you push notification. And the reason that you want to do that is, and now you need to spell out uh, the reasons, um, and, and when you do it properly, and I, I'll talk about the reasons in a second, you see a very, very high uh, acceptance rates. So for example, there's a, a retail uh, brand, it's a fashion brand for, for young women, uh, that got a 95% uh, opt-in rate for location services and for uh, Bluetooth and for push notification using a tactic that you know some people uh, call FOMO, fear of missing out. And in their case, it was not about uh, only you're going to get all those great advantages, but it is, and if you say no, you know, your friends are going to get all those great discounts and your friends are going to get invitation to do all those cool events and see the new collections and you're going to miss out on that. So a combination of giving them the right incentives, um, and, and I'll talk about incentives in a second, and on the other hand, um, you know, fomenting uh, this, uh, fomenting this uh, fear of missing out uh, element of, you know, I'm, I'm really going uh, uh, not to enjoy things that other people will uh, if I'm, I'm not opting in to those uh, uh, questions is the way to go. And in terms of uh, positive uh, engagement, I think you know, one notable thing this uh, season is that for Black Friday, Macy's uh, announced you know, that they have sweepstakes uh, where you can win uh, $1 million. Uh, but the way to do that is you need to interact with beacons in the stores. So they've installed beacons in all the 700 stores. Um, and in order to participate in the sweepstakes and to get a chance to win uh, this, this million dollars, you need to, to turn uh, you know, Bluetooth on and you need to, to be interactive beacons. Uh, so you have on the one hand the positive incentive, you have on the other hand the fear of missing out, and this combination can give you a very, very high uh, opt-in rate. Um, let's take the next one more question. question. Uh, we already have a CRM system. Can we leverage it for beacon engagement? I think you addressed that now. Yeah, I think you know we addressed it in the presentation. But absolutely, the answer is maybe not from day one. Maybe you want to run the system in a few months, you know, just to to get everything well oiled, etc. But eventually, yes, you want us, you want VisionNet and Moingo to integrate whatever mobile uh, solution uh, we built for you with your existing CRM system and look at your customers in a 360 degree you know, holistic view um, in order to get the best ROI uh, from the program. True, and uh, all fits in very well with understanding your consumer and making sure that you can apply an omni-channel uh, model to them. Um, there's one here about business intelligence, so I want to get to that one. Can, can we use beacons? just for BI or business intelligence and not to engage customers directly? So in theory you can uh, and, and maybe you know uh, you want to do uh, business intelligence mostly in the first months of your deployment and, and start engaging people uh, a little bit later but I would caution you from doing uh, only business intelligence like 100 percent because you do want people to opt in, and if you don't give them an incentive, if you don't tell them, look, you're going to get a discount, you're going to get invitations to events, you're going to participate in sweepstakes, uh, and you're using it only to track them, only to get business intelligence, then probably you're not going to get enough people opting in, you're not going to, to have enough people turning Bluetooth on, uh, opting into to um, location services. There must be something in it for the customer. You cannot treat the mobile channel is a, 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 is a way just to get information. It's a two-way street. There, 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 there is a quid pro quo here. There must be something in it for the customers for the program to be successful. Very good. Uh, I think we're, we're done with all of uh, the questions that we can answer now. Uh, if, if there is a bunch of others that we have to get to. Uh, so we will be com contacting uh, those folks who submitted 
questions and publishing it out to the attendees um, uh, post-conference here, post-webinar. I want to thank my colleague, uh, Daniel Drayman, for, for joining us. I hope, I intently hope that uh, all of you have had a, uh, um, a, a webinar that was filled with information and uh, gives you an opportunity to take advantage of this type of solution, which is very powerful uh, in, the, in the new digital landscape. So thank you very much, and look for others that will come out from uh, VisionNet and Moingo in the future. Have a great day. Thank you very much, folks.